Heavenly Father, we say thank you again. Thank you who have assembled your church this day to worship, honor, and adore thee. Yes, Lord. We say may thy holy name be magnified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we have assembled, let thy spirit lead us. Yes, Lord. We cover this message with the blood of Jesus. Lord, Lord, Lord. Jesus. We cover your children worldwide with the blood of Jesus. Lord, Lord, Lord. Jesus. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. The title of our message today is I am a jealous God. Amen. Amen. One more time. I am a jealous God. The first commandment that God gave to mankind through Moses was this. He says, Thou shalt have no other God before me. When he was giving them the Ten Commandments, that we guide the children of God unto eternity. He warned that believers will not have any other gods beside the living God. It is an abomination. It is not a common sin. If you don't mind and you're having your Bible, please turn with me to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 3. And it says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Amen. Amen. When God was giving the Ten Commandments to Moses, he commanded, Speak to my people. Warn the world, You shall have no other gods before the living God. For a reason. Because the living God is a jealous God. Because the living God has made you in his image. Other gods that you are worshipping has not created you. And God won't. For this reason, you shall have no other gods before either living God. And today, revised is the case. Today we have seen it in the churches. Today we have seen it among believers. Worshipping unknown gods. An idol of nations. I proceed to verse 4. And verse 4 says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Praise the living God. Amen. And regardless of what your pastor may have taught you in the past, and regardless of what your bishop may have taught you, and regardless of what your denomination, the church you belong to, have taught you, now listen to this. This is a commandment from the Most High God unto the world, more especially to the believers. And he says, You shall not make unto thyself any graven image. Is it an image that is being carved and placed in a church? It is forbidden. Is it image in the heavens? <coughs> and the Most High God warned God gave this message to Moses, hand to hand and face to face. It was not by the means of the angels of God. No. After the 40 days and 40 nights of prayers of Moses, God gave him this message. The angels did not give this message to Moses. And the Most High God warned the images in the heavens. The images of the angels, he says, don't worship them. The images on earth, as we have seen churches, carving images and misleading the children of God to worship images, it is an abomination before the Most High God. And he proceeds to say, 
the images in the waters, you don't need to worship them. Nor the images in the graves, you don't need to worship them. No matter the origination of those images, no matter how powerful those images are, through believers, if you are a child of God, you don't need to worship them. According to the commandments that comes from the Most High God, it is not the commandments of men. It is not the commandments of the angels. It is not the commandments of Moses. But the commandments of the maker of heaven and the earth. He commanded, don't worship them. Don't bow before them. Few years ago, I made mention of idol worship. What I'm seeing disturbs me a lot. But so many people believe I, I'm talking about the Koreans. I'm not talking about the Koreans. I talk about the African people as well. The idol worship among the Africans. Some of them are members of this church. Some of them are not members of this church. But there is free compassion and retribution from the Most High God to idol worshippers. I'm not talking about Koreans. I know that Koreans are Buddhist nation. I know they worship multiple gods. I know the Asians worship multiple gods. But my message to them is this. Come back to the commandments of the Most High God. The gods that some of us worship. I felt so bad and depressed. When I come to see some of the gods of some of our African brothers, having the act of covenant with Satan, operating with it. And when you die in this land, you expect people to start mourning you. Praise and give God. Amen. It is preferable for we to throw away those things. And verse 5 proceeds to say, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Praise and be God. Amen. The destruction you are causing for yourself is not for yourself alone, but you are causing destructions for your family as well. And the Lord says, unto the third and fourth generation, of those that hate me, of those that worship idol on earth. Now, go back to the African problems. Most families in Africa, they keep suffering today because of the demon that their forefathers have served. And you are adding more problems and burden on yourself and on your family. Taking the names of people from this land down to Africa, for devilish purposes. When God revealed to me so many things, I became frustrated and fed up. But listen to me. If you are willing to come back to God, God is willing to accept you. Condemnation is still coming upon our earth. It's because of the wrath of God. That condemnation and destruction, no power can stop it. When I mentioned it a few years, in 2019, destruction will come. People will die. No power will stop it. So many people argued it. And we have seen it worldwide. We have seen it worldwide. And more destructions and anger of God is coming, except we turn away from evil ways and embrace the way of Christ Jesus. Praise the living God. Amen. If you don't mind, please still turn with me to the book of Joshua to see the warning of Joshua unto the children of Israel in his days. Joshua chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 19. And it says, And Joshua said unto the people, Ye cannot serve the Lord, for he is an holy God. He is a jealous God. 
He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. Praise the living God. Amen. What we have come to see today in our generation, Joshua saw it as well in his days. When God has fought for the children of Israel, right from the land of Egypt, a land that they were being enslaved, a land that they were being tortured, a land of their sorrows, and God decided to deliver them from that land. The idols they decided to start worshipping did not deliver them from that land. And some of us, the idols that some of us are worshipping have not delivered you from your problem, have not sought anything for you, but the living God has done that. And you, you are giving the glory to devil. And in the days of Joshua, the children of Israel decided to depart from the ways of God. And Joshua called them. He says, you cannot serve the living God because he is an holy God. He is a holy God. In the second place, he is a jealous God. You cannot serve this God. Earlier in verse 14, he called them and he says, choose the God you want to serve. If you want to serve the gods of the Amorites, it's up to you. If you want to serve the Buddhist god, it is up to you. If you want to serve the dragon spirit, it is up to you. The god of the Hittites, it is up to you. The god of the Egyptians, is up to you. The god, god of the Hivites, is up to you. Any god that you want to serve, it is up to you. And he made it to be clear, but for myself and my family, I will worship the living God. And in verse 19, he's telling them, there is no point of keep bargaining. You cannot serve the living God. Because you have not got that spirit. You have not made up your spirit to serve the living God. And verse 20 says, If you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that, he had done you good. The problem that comes on some of us comes from the living God. There is no solution for those problems. The problem of the world comes from the living God. As I said it earlier in 2019, before we start seeing it, there is no solution. The only solution and way out is this. Come back to your maker who has made you. Satan has not made you. The idols you worship have not made you. And Joshua was warning them and reminding them that this God, after blessing you, you turn your back on the living God, that God will do you evil. And this is the evil that we have seen today in our lives, in our world. It is preferable for the children of God. If you have made up your mind to be a worshiper of God, to be a believer, throw away what Satan has given to you. It makes you no good. The oppression of Satan must surely have an end. Those that worship Satan as well must surely have an bitter end. But the blessings of God is for all eternity. Praise the living God. Amen. Stay tall with me, please. Let us see the teachings of Christ Jesus about having double standing. Turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 6. I'll read from verse 24. If you are there, say amen. Amen. And he says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, for else he will hold one to, to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and Satan. You cannot serve God and Buddhism. You cannot serve God and tribal. You cannot serve God and the idol of your family. You cannot serve God and the idol of your community. It is impossible. And the scripture says, Jesus says to, to, to the believers, 
you cannot serve God and the devil. Which means no part of the scripture encourages idol worship. Idolatry. It is an abomination before the living God. Still talk with me to the advice of Elijah because what we have seen, we have been seeing it right from the days of the old. Let's see the advice of Elijah to the children of God in his days. Turn with me to the book of 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 20. And it says, So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel, and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt he between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Praise the living God. Amen. In the days of Elijah the prophet, he was so angry over what was happening in the land. When the children of God deserted the ways of God, they worship different demons in their days. And they come to worship God as well. They come for their sacrifice, for their festivals, before the living God as well. And Elijah the prophet stood upon the word of the living God. And he commanded, bring them together. He asked, how long? After all the miracles of God in our lives, after all the testimonies that we have seen, and yet we keep having double opinion, double standard, from demon to God. And Elijah said, If the most high God who has made you is the living God, he says, Worship him. And if the gods you have decided to go into are the real God, Follow him. But listen to this. When Elijah the prophet decided to pray, and God asked him to tell the land there will be any rain in this land for three and a half years. The Almighty God, He locked up the doors and windows of heaven. There was no rain upon the face of the earth. The Ari Krishna God did not open those doors and windows of heaven. The Buddhist God did not open it. The demons that we are worshipping did not open it. Until three and a half years passes by. And the word of God came to the man of God, Elijah the prophet again, and says, Go and present yourself before the entire Israel. And when Elijah the prophet came, before the entire Israel. He spoke to the living God who is in heaven. Our God is in heaven. And he knelt down and called upon the unchangeable El Shaddai, the God that will never change. And the windows and doors of heaven were being opened again. And there was plenty of rain upon the face of the earth. Is that not enough for you to understand? That the most high God is the only liable power. Demons, they are powerless. They will surely have an end. When we continue with our message, you will surely understand the end of this demon and the powers that we are using. If you don't mind that you are still having your Bible, still talk with me to the book of 1 Corinthians to see the warning of St. Paul to we believers. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I read from verse 14. And he says, Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. No part of scripture has supported idolatry from Genesis to the book of Revelation. And whenever you find any portion of the scripture that backs it up, let me know. And St. Paul was talking to believers in his days. 
He says, Dear beloved, please kindly forsake idol worship. Flee from idolatry. It is not of God, and it will never be of God. And there must be recompense. God will pay back to each and every one of us. What I may have committed, where no man is seeing me, God is seeing me. The day we come, God will judge. There will be recompense unto we all. For this reason, kindly think to wise about your eternity, about your relationship with your maker who has made you. Praise the living God. Amen. If you don't mind, sit down with me to the book of Numbers to see similar warning in the days of Moses before the children of Israel were being destroyed in their wilderness. There was warning. Turn with me to the book of Numbers chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 33. And he says, And your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years, and there your wardrobes, until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. Praise the living God. Amen. When God delivered the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. His plan for them was this. His plan for them was for them to make that journey for 40 days, not 40 years. He had plan for them for 40 days. He displayed his power in the land of, in the land of Egypt. He displayed his power against all their enemies along the way. He defeated all their enemies. For them to believe him. And eventually, they started worshiping different gods. Eventually, they started murmuring, saying things they don't know. As we see them in the churches. And the Most High God decided to call them back to order. He warned. He said, listen to me. I will destroy you all. Make your body to waste in that wilderness. For the sake of your wardrobe, infidelity, God considers idolatry as infidelity before him. It's like when you're having a wife and your wife goes to different men, you will not be happy. That is how it looks before the living God, worshiping different idols. And he was warning them. The journey of 40 days we turn to a journey of 40 years because of their evil. And verse 34 proceeds to say, After the number of days in which ye sighed the land, even 40 days, each day for a year, shall ye bear your iniquities, even 40 years, and ye shall know my bleach of promise. When evil starts coming in our lives, sickness starts coming in our lives, failure starts coming in our lives, sudden death starts coming in our lives, lack of peace starts coming into our families. Think properly. Am I still following the right way? Am I still worshipping God in the right way? Or have I... <coughs> went into the ways that, that are not the ways of God. And God decided to call the children of Israel. He said unto them, As you have searched for this land for 40 days, 40 days, I'm turning it to 40 years, because you have sinned against the living God. Those pastors that are not teaching you the truth, that are not telling you what is in the scripture, or what God has said, Mind you, we have agents of darkness in the name of pastors. Come to your scripture. Come back to your God. Throw away those idols. It will destroy your relationship with God. It will cause you more problems. 
it will cause you more problems. You have it within your mind what you have done. You believe that nobody knows or nobody sees. I knows. I knows. God has spoken to me. God knows. God knows more, more than what you have done. The only thing for you is this. Take away those things out of your ways, out of your life. Confess to the living God. Don't confess to me. No man has power to forgive sin. Any church that tells you, come and confess your sins to me so that your sins will be forgiven. That is heresy. The only power that has power to forgive sins is the most high God. Go silently. Ask God for mercy. Throw away those things. Reject those things. God will have mercy on you. Praise the name of God. Amen. And verse 35 says, I, the Lord, have said, I will surely do it unto this evil congregation that are gathered together against me. In this wilderness, they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. When you proceed, you come to understand what God says. All the thousands that left the land of Egypt, when God was telling them what he would do to them, he says, he will destroy them. That the whole of them will die in that wilderness. They will not make that journey. Except two people. He made mention of two, two people. Joshua and Caleb. We made this journey. The rest of them are the little children, the young generation. And we come to understand from the book of Joshua chapter 23, chapter 24, that the whole of them that left that land, they died in the wilderness. The thousands that left the land of Egypt, moving to the land of Canaan, they all died according to the word of God. Only Joshua and Caleb made that journey. I'm pleading to you, dear brothers and sisters, what we call the mind of God is what, who tells you what comes to pass. He is man of God. Who tells you what will come upon our earth. It comes to pass. Me this year, I still gave you another prophecy to the world that I says, the same angels of God that killed, they are coming back again to kill. I'm saying for sure, so many will still pass away. So many. It is left for you to salvage your soul through repentance. When you change, confess to God, God may deliver you from what is coming. That death, is it coming? It's coming. For sure. No power can stop it. It will come. It is left for I and you to embrace God Almighty. Appreciate what God has been doing in your life. Those demons have not done anything for you. Those idols have not done anything for you. No matter what they have promised you, this is what has been protecting you. You want me to mention so many tragedy and accidents and evil that most of us have went into. Why didn't those demons deliver them? It cannot deliver you because they have no power to deliver. But the only power that can deliver is the Most High God. Praise the name. Amen. Stay on with me to the book of Jeremiah to hear the word of God from the prophets of the Most High God, Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 44. I'm reading from verse 4. And he says, How be it I said unto you, all my servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, Oh, do not these abominable things that I hate. And in the days of Jeremiah the prophet, he was recalling the word and the children of God. He says, How beat have the most high God sent forth his holy prophets with this great message? Message of deliverance, message of repentance, 
message of salvation, message of eternity. I have sent them. It comes from the Most High God. It doesn't come from any man. It says, how long have I been sending these people? They work so early to let you know the will of God, to call you back to the living God, to stop doing what God hated. There's what God hated. There is lots of heresy in Christianity. They tell you lots of lie in Christianity. They tell you commit sin and ask for forgiveness. No, it is lie. God is not forgiving. What Jesus taught us was this. These people have turned the scripture upside down because of their criminal mindedness. What the scripture taught us is this. Jesus says, ask God for your trespasses, the mistakes, the mistakes that you have made. Not about the evil that you have committed. We have differences in the sins that we commit. There are sins that are trespass. When you are led to walk, I don't want your boss to fire you. You told him there is no boss, that was why you are late. Or you told him you are sick, that was why you are late. It is a trespass. When you go and you acquired evil power, I do. It is abomination before God. It is not a trespass. When you go and you killed, it is abomination before God. When you are a witch, it is abomination before God. There is no forgiveness for these sins. Perhaps God may forgive you. I don't know. But I'm very sure there is no forgiveness. The chances of forgiveness is very narrow. We have sins that we call evil before God. We have sins that we call iniquity before God. We have sins that we call trespasses before God. When you kill somebody and take his wife, it is abomination. All these sins, there is no forgiveness. This is why you must be careful. A man who doesn't know the scripture teaching you that you should go and commit sin and come back to God, that God will forgive. How possible do you think that is? It is not possible. One of my, my last messages, I told you, Judas Iscariot betrayed his master. He shedded a righteous blood. There was no forgiveness for him. Jesus told him, it is better you are not being born. There, was, there is no forgiveness for him. Ananias and Sapphira, they committed such sin. There is no forgiveness for them. This is what we try to understand, the gravity of what we are committing. Praise the name God. Amen. I proceed to verse 5. And verse 5 says, But they hearken not, nor incline their, heart, their ear to turn from their wickedness, to burn no incense unto other gods. Whenever the children of Israel were being taken into captivities, check well, they worship other gods, and the anger of God came upon them. Whenever there is famine upon the land of Israel, check very well. They have sinned against God by worshipping other gods. It is an abomination before God. For that reason, we the believers don't need to go into that. It is not of God and can never be of God. If you don't mind to conclude our message, turn with me to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. The book of Revelation, chapter 19 and verse 20 says, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet, that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These boats were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with crystal. Praise the living God. Amen. When Jesus was revealing to John the end of the days, how it will look like, he says, Satan, the great beast that have deceived the world, he was being arrested. 
all the fake pastors and prophets that walks alongside with him, with their fake miracles, they were all arrested by the powerful angels of God. And he says, to all those that worship, you have the magical power. Have you marked anything into your body in, in, in midst of incantation and whatsoever you want to be doing with those powers? Are you worshipping the powers of the graves? Are you doing it to prosper your business? Are you doing it to protect your family? Are you doing it to prosper your life? No matter how you do it. And the scripture says, all those that have worshipped Satan through these images, they were being cast into fire. This is the reward of the wicked. There is hell fire. There is kingdom of God. Both of them exist. When God was giving the last revelation to John, how the end of the days will look like. In Revelation chapter 19, verse 20, he warned that the world, this must surely come to be. These people must surely have an end. Are they the greatest magicians of this world? Occult grandmasters of this world, the idols of this world, the gods and goddess of this world, they must surely have an end. In Revelation chapter 20, from verse 10, God revealed again to John. He says in verse 10, Satan and all his agents and all this power must surely be arrested. In Revelation chapter 21, from verse 8, he said it again. Satan and evil doers, they must surely be arrested and be destroyed at the last day. In 22, Revelation chapter 22, the last chapter of the scripture, Jesus warned. He says, without our dogs, people that are defied, evil powers, magicians, occult grandmasters, no matter whatsoever they, they no matter whatsoever the doors on earth and the source of their power, they must surely come to an end at the last day. They shall be arrested by the powerful angels of God. And they shall be destroyed for all eternity. My message to you is this, dear children of God. Let us worship God in fear. Follow your God. God who has not failed. That God will never fail you. No matter the situation or circumstances, that God will never fail. But if you desire to worship any God, it is up to you. May God bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.